All right, you've heard me talk about energy a number of times. I've written about it in the Daily Notes, it's been on the podcast, guests and I have talked about it, and I'm not talking about the energy of how much energy you have to move throughout the day. While we will touch on that, I'm talking more about the energy that you emit, the energy that you put out there. You might wanna call it your aura, you might wanna call it your frequency, you might wanna call it your vibe. I am talking about the energy that you put out and therefore that is the energy that attracts things into your life. And if you're operating from a low level of energy, there's a good chance that you're, you're attracting other low energy things into your life, which may be keeping you from living your authentic life and pursuing it and finding more happiness. So if you're operating from a low level of energy, how can you drive that energy up? Well, I've got five things for you to consider to increase your energy, to attract more of what you want in your life and pursue your authentic life. All right, so let's get to the first of the ways that you can increase your energy. And I think it is the most important because it's the one that you have the most control over. And it's how you talk to yourself. It's controlling your thoughts, the beliefs about yourself, what you say to yourself when you look yourself into the mirror or what you say to yourself throughout the day. If you are operating from a low level of energy, then there's a very good chance that you have low self-esteem, that you are not viewing yourself in a positive way, that you are saying mean, hurtful things to yourself. And if that's the case, then these other four things aren't even going to work because if you remove some of the other low energy influences on your life, but you're stuck in your head with negative energy, low energy, you're never going to break yourself out. So the most important thing you can do is begin to become aware of how are you talking to yourself? How do you view yourself? And if it isn't a low level of energy, you need to find ways to increase that. Find things to be grateful for. Find ways to drive the energy up in other things in your life so you see yourself in a good light. So the first and foremost thing that you need to do to increase your energy to a higher level, bring in new energy to you, is to change the way you talk change the way you view, change the way you treat yourself. If you aren't going to treat yourself at a high level of energy with respect and love and positivity, then why would you expect anybody else to? You've got to do it first to allow that other positive energy, that other high energy to come to you. It's the law of attraction. What you put out is what you are going to attract. And if you're putting out negative, the first way you can change what's coming back to you is to drive your energy up by loving yourself more, finding things to be positive about with yourself and talking to yourself in a more respectful and loving way. So change the way you view yourself, change the way you talk to yourself and watch your energy begin to rise. All right, the second one. This is an easy one to control too and it will have a big impact. Uh, it is going to check the content you're consuming. What are you watching? Where are you scrolling? Are you doom scrolling? Is everything on your social media feed negative and telling you how bad the world is? Well, then of course you're going to see everything because you're just consuming nothing but negative energy, low energy that's feeding into you, which is controlling your thoughts, which might control the way you view yourself, all because of what you're reading. You choose what, you cho what you're reading. Yes, the algorithms feed it to you, but it's what you engage with. It's who you follow. It's what you watch. It's what you say because the algorithms are listening and they're pulling that content into you. So the second thing you can change to increase your energy is the content you consume. You can either stop it, which may not be a bad idea, or you can change who you follow. You can change the content that you engage with and clean up your algorithm so that the feed is sending you positive things, optimistic things. Things are going to lift you up. So again, now you have positive energy coming in through what is you're consuming. It's lifting your energy. You feel better because you see the world as a great place to be with all of the positives that are out there, despite there are going to be some negatives. But overwhelmingly, you're seeing good things, which allows you to be happier, which allows you to see yourself in a better light and talk to yourself more lovingly, which again is going to drive your energy up. So the second thing you need to do is check your social media, check the content you're consuming, check the stations you're watching, and what are they feeding you? because that's going to impact your energy as well. The third one, kind of connected, but a little bit different. We're moving off of the social world into the physical world, the people that you surround yourself with. What are the people you surround yourself with like? Are they high energy or are they low energy? We know the saying, misery loves company. Are you surrounding yourself with misery, keeping you living in misery? Or are you surrounding yourself with people who are lifting themselves up, which will by default lift you up as well? You know the saying, we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with. 
what are the five, who are the five people you spend the most time with and what are they doing? What are the, what is their energy and how is that impacting you? Now, this may not be an easy one. It's not quite as easy as changing your social media feed because there are relationships involved. And sometimes these people that are in our life that are pulling us down are our loved ones. There are people that have been in our lives for a very long time and to say, hey, you are no longer good for me and helping me go where I want to go is a tough conversation to have. But if your happiness, if living your authentic life, if your pursuit is that important, then those conversations need to be had. And in some situations, maybe they're not people that are in your inner circle. They're on your second or third level of friends. Sometimes those are people that if you just quit calling, they don't call you and they just naturally drift out. I'm not going to tell you that every severance of a relationship is going to be so easy as to not send them a message and they'll just drift away. There will be some. Some of them may require you to have hard conversations and it's what you need to do if you're doing what's best for you. And truthfully, it's going to be best for them as well. So check the people that you're with. What are they doing? What are they saying? Where are they operating? And if it's not where you want to be or it's pulling you down, then that's the next place for you to change. All right, the fourth thing. Going to get into the physical space again, but now your physical body, your physical self. How are you taking care of yourself? So yes, I'm talking about the energy that you put out, but it's very hard to be positive energy and high energy if you're dragging. So are you getting enough sleep? Most of us aren't. Are you getting quality sleep? I know I don't get quality sleep, but are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting good sleep? Are you eating healthy? The food that you put in feeds your body and how you feel. And if you are not feeling good because you're putting crappy food into your body, then your energy is going to go down because you just don't feel good. And it's hard to operate at a high level of excitement and energy if you're not feeling good. So what's the food like you're putting in? And then finally, are you moving? Are you exercising? Exercise is important as we know. All of the positive health benefits from a physical standpoint, our heart uh, strength, all of the things that could come with it, but also the endorphins that get released that make you feel good. I know I feel better when I'm working out regularly. I actually know exactly what I need to do to feel my best. And sometimes I'm doing it regularly and sometimes I'm not. It's going to bed early enough to wake up early, to do my morning meditation, to do some morning workout, going to yoga, doing what I love throughout the day, and then getting a little bit more of exercise or walking and playing with the boys in the evening. When I'm doing those things, getting the, the mental workout, getting the physical workout, getting a weight workout in as well, that is when I feel my best. I feel best from an energy standpoint. I feel best from a mental standpoint. And my body just feels better. Whether or not I'm more lean, I don't know. But I feel more lean. And when I feel more lean, I'm at a higher level. So the next thing you can do, the fourth thing you can do, is to evaluate how you're taking care of your physical self and make changes and make that a priority. If we think about financial planning and how all this fits into the authentic life and the pursuit, this may be an area that you need to dedicate more of your budget to and steal from other areas so you can afford to take care of yourself. You can afford to buy better food. You can afford the gym membership or whatever it may be. But the good thing is for some of these things, the, the workouts and the exercise, there's a lot of great resources that reside on YouTube and other places where you can begin to change those habits without having to have a lot of money. Um, now, food and those things are different, but if it's that important to you, that's an area you need to focus on as well. And then the final fifth thing is do more of what you love, whether it's your career, whether, whether it's other things outside of the work time, do more of what you love. Because when you're doing what you love, you're excited, you're happy, and that's going to drive your energy up as well. So finding more time for the passions of your life, to explore interests that might become passions. Passion is a great guide, so make sure you have time for that. And if you just hit on a few of these areas, you don't have to get all five. I would love for you to get all five. But if you get a few of these and make those changes, then you're going to see your energy begin to increase. And as your energy increases, you're going to attract more positive, high energy things into your life, which is going to begin to compound. So whenever you hit those low moments, which we all will have them, be, be aware. Understand when your energy is lower and, and catch it and tell yourself, hey, I'm operating on a low level of energy. I need to drive that energy up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change what it is I'm thinking about. Even if things are tough, I'm going to find things to think positive about myself or my situation or what's going on to pull me into the direction of the positive higher energy. 
And then are there things you're consuming in the moment that are adding to the stress and the frustration that you have? Change that. The people you surround yourself with, if they're adding on, change those people. Or seek out people that you know in that moment can help lift you up. Maybe you don't need them all the time, but there's that one person you know you can call that no matter what, they're going to find the silver lining to help you through that moment to lift you up. Call that person. Go see them. Go take a, a walk. Go get outside in nature. Go do a workout. Go get some extra rest. Take care of your physical body. And then find the things that you love and find more time for them. So if you do those five things, I promise you, your energy will begin to rise up. And once it gets up, a lot of good things go and the momentum keeps. Just like when you're down low and you're focusing on the negative, that momentum continues as well. And you have control over all these factors. It won't always be easy, but it will be worth it. And again, you have the control over it. So I hope those five things help you drive your energy up. Drive your energy up from what you're putting out there, from what you're attracting in, and also drive your energy up through the day so you feel more excited and energetic to do these great things and go pursue that authentic life. So I hope this has been helpful. We'll be back with more number of things to help you on your authentic life and follow your pursuit. But for now, that's it. So go drive your energy levels up and let's keep on pursuing.